Limestones hold a fascination with geologists. Not only do they contain the fossilized remains of marine life, but they do strange things when exposed to the surface, as rain and fresh waters carve these rock layers in the most unusual ways. Limestones are deposited by the deposition of fossilized skeletons of marine life that contain calcium carbonate. These aquatic creatures form skeletons by either using needle-like crystals of calcium carbonate called aragonite, sometimes called a mother of pearl, or the more brick-like crystals of calcite. The crystalline lattice armor of calcium, carbon, and oxygen protects the marine animals from predators. Not all marine organisms use calcium carbonate to build their shells. Others use silica or organic carbon, but calcium carbonate is readily available in the ocean waters. So clams, ammonites, brachiopods, bryas, uh, uh, barnacles, um, many types of algae, uh, bryozoans, corals, you know, many planktonic marine organisms, they, they all secrete calcium carbonate shells. And all of these organisms, they die over time, and their skeletons form a graveyard of limestone. This limestone only really became abundant in the years after these organisms had evolved in the early Phanerozoic, during the Paleozoic era. Throughout the early Paleozoic, these animals ruled the oceans and thick layers of limestone formed around the world. And here in Utah, a vast shallow sea existed, which led to a thick deposits of limestone 350 million years ago. The Madison limestone is one of the thickest sets of these limestone layers uh, here in Utah. And this layer is found throughout Wyoming, Colorado, and clear up to Montana, and even into southern Canada. Its type section is in Montana, and the wide geographic distribution of this layer of rock attests to the vastness of the shallow ocean during this period of time in the American West. If you've ever driven across the American West, many of the canyon walls that you pass through are formed from Mississippian age limestones, including the Glen uh, Wood Canyon in Colorado and the Wind River Canyon in Wyoming. Here in Utah, the Madison limestone is more locally called the Lodgepole limestone. Not everywhere was their ocean. In uh, Nevada, a mountain range called the Antler Mountains pushed out of this ocean, and places in Colorado saw the early rise of the ancestral Rockies, which would also push up making a series of island mountain chains. Part of the reason for this vast shallow ocean on the western margin of the North American continent was that the tectonic plate was migrating toward the east, and this coastline was a passive margin leaving a wide continental shelf behind. While occasionally the Pacific plates would bump into the shelf and subduction would raise up a mountain range out of the shallow sea, it was not the mountainous region that it is today. In eastern North America, and particularly in, in Europe, uh, the two continents were sparing off as they wrestled against each other. In Western Europe, a massive mountain range, perhaps one of the greatest to have ever formed, was starting its ascent as North America and Europe collided. And on the edges of this resulting high mountain range um, in Europe and in Eastern North America, swamps, uh, water-filled basins, and river-filled Piedmonts all formed. Over in Europe, a lush forest stretched out from these mountains in these basins that captured the intense rainfall uh, that got hung up on these massive mountains. In Europe, they call this long period of time the Carboniferous because these forests, these ancient forests, led to thick layers of carbon-rich coal that spurred the Industrial Revolution. In North America, and especially in the United States, the Carboniferous is divided into two geological periods, the older Mississippian and the younger Pennsylvanian, named after two states which are dominated by rocks of this age. The Madison limestone that we're going to explore today was formed during the early Mississippian, about 350 million years ago, 
when all of Utah was submerged under this shallow sea. This valley that we're in today is just below the flank fault. It's a massive normal fault that runs east-west. This fault formed by a block basically dropping down and a blocks are rising up like two pieces of paper that are cut with a massive scissors. And we're in the lower um, side of this fault in a valley containing a thick series of Mississippian and Pennsylvania limestones. And as we move down the valley, these rock layers become subterranean. And it is in the underground realm that this particular limestone holds its importance to the residents here in Utah as a source of groundwater as an aquifer. When people settled in this area in the late 1800s, they noticed that the creek that ran this valley was dry and the water seemed to vanish as it flowed out of the mountains. As they followed the creek up the valley, they discovered the mystery of the disappearing water. It appeared that the water was draining down into holes and caverns that existed in the limestones. Now, unable to tap into this water for their farming needs, the citizens decided to build a flume, an above-ground tin-filled canal that would transport the water across the limestone rock layers down to the farms and fields and prevent the water from disappearing underground. The endeavor was met with failure, but today the Madison Limestone is a really important underground source of water, an aquifer, which is actually drilled down uh, by the residents of the valley for drinking water. The reason that limestones form such great places for underground water, groundwater has to do with the fact that they tend to dissolve in contact with muriatic water, which is um, slightly acidic and thus it dissolves forming pits, vugs, holes, and eventually long series of caverns. Once drained of water, those caverns become caves. And today we're going to explore one of the many caves found within the Madison Limestone. But now they don't. There might be bats in here. Yeah, but this wood and in here the bowels of the cave, what do you think of the cave? Cool. Is it really cool? It's pretty neat. Could you imagine how this formed? By water? By water, yeah. Water f used to flow through here and now all the water is gone. It's blocked up. Here, I'll just see. All right, there it goes. Okay. It doesn't go anywhere. It just stays right here. That is easy. It's blocked up, see? Yeah, but then it kind of goes like this, but I think... Oh, man. Oh, yeah, it blocked it. It's blocked up. That's the end of the game. You're not dead. Dad, uh, oh, uh, okay, this glass. They, they didn't go. Dad, let's go, this glass. Okay, let's... watch. So look at this rock here. Look at this rock here. This one like washed in and is just wedged here. So that probably connects. There's probably a passage. You can see the rocks have washed into the cave. Oh, I saw it even right here. So there's a rock. Hey Zoe, what do you think of this cave? Is it spooky? What do you think, Felice? Is it spooky? I think it's cool. Is it cool? Small. Helps to be small. Uh, what do you see up there, Felice? Uh, here's a block place. Is it, is it blocked up there? Well, it's, um, well, it's, well, it stops right here. It stops right there. Wait, wait for me. 
So he's coming up to check it out too. Do you think we're trapped in the cave now? No getting out. We're lost in here, guys. Hey, but we found to get out of it. That was the way we thought it was out. <laughs> and now it's all blocked up. What are we gonna do, guys? How are we gonna get out of here? We're gonna go so over we, there. So we are panicking. How are we gonna go out of here? Over there to mom. Uh, over there to mom? Did she find the entrance? <laughs> the, the way out of this cave, the exit? <laughs> Maybe? I, I don't know. I'm terrified. You'll have to show me the way to get out of this cave. Right there. Right there? Turn around. Right, right, right. Oh, there it is. There's the exit. We made it. We made it out of the cave. Ow. So what do you guys think of the cave? Awesome. Good.